Okay, so I'm, I know you've got your table filled out, and real quick, what'd you get? This is the first one. This is the exponential e to the x power. So, first thing, and I think I mentioned this the other day, but just to make you aware, it looks like on the calculator, because of the way it draws this, that this graph actually stops right here, but it doesn't. It actually continues to go all the way to negative infinity. It's just a, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to that axis, and there's just no way for your calculator to, to indicate that with those pixels. So it kind of looks like it stops, but it doesn't. So when you graph it, you probably do want to go ahead and put arrowhead, so just so that you know, y'all know I'm a terrible graphic. <laughs> just so that you know that it goes on forever that way. So your domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Your range, what about your range? Zero to infinity. Good, it's zero not included to infinity because there is an asymptote, which is the next question. This time it's a horizontal asymptote that occurs at the, at the x-axis, which means it is y equals zero. I'm going to put in parentheses, that's the x-axis. Okay, so now end behavior, we don't talk a whole lot about, because it's, a, it's an actually, it's a pre-cal concept, but if you look at the top of this page, this is a pre-cal page. That's because, used to, we did not do e to the x power or natural log in Algebra 2. We used to wait and do it in pre-cal, but now you are the lucky um, beneficiaries of the change in the teaks. It is now moved into Algebra 2, so now we have to teach it to you now. So real quick, end behavior is just what are the ends of the graph doing? See, we read in the United States, we read from left to right, but not everybody does. And graphs can actually be read both ways, from left to right and right to left. So that's what the end behavior thing is all about, is just what are the ends of the graph doing? So when we're looking at it, we're going to read first, we'll read from right to left just like always, as x goes to infinity. So it's this weird little arrow. So they're saying if we were reading from left to right and x was increasing and going towards infinity, what is y doing? As x is moving this way, where is y headed? Up. To where? Infinity. infinity. So that's the end behavior. As x is going to infinity, y is going to infinity. That is the right hand end behavior, meaning the right side of our graph. So now we need the left hand end behavior. So we're going to read our graph from right to left. So you're going to read it this way. And that would be as x goes to negative infinity. So we're going to write x with a crazy little arrow to negative infinity. In this case, what does y do? It decreases how far though? Just to zero. So as, we're, as x is moving further and further to infinity, y is getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So that's the end behavior of this one. So now let's switch it, and we're going to put in our log function. So we're going to go down and use that ln button. That means natural log. And there's our graph. And again, it looks like it started like right here, but it doesn't really. It goes all the way down with an arrow head. So it looks kind of like that. What's your domain of this one? 0.5. It looks like 0.5, but actually it is also 0, not included, to infinity. Because this one has an asymptote at zero. And if, you, if, you're, if you're not sure and you go to your table, and right now I can, I can tell obviously that it doesn't go back into the negative numbers, but if I change my table setting, and let's say I'm going to count by, let's see, let's go to zero. I'm going to count by 0 0.001. See, there's still a value here. At point zero zero one, there's still a number. It doesn't have an error until zero, because that's where the asymptote is. So my range for this one, however, is... Our calculator is just error everywhere below. Hold on, let me look at it. Um, your range is negative infinity to positive infinity. 
And this time you do have a vertical asymptote. So it's going to be at x equals 0. <coughs> so your asymptote is the y-axis this time. Okay, so we're going to read our end behavior first as x goes to infinity. So the right-hand side of the graph. As we read this graph this way, as x is going bigger and bigger and bigger, what is your y doing? It's going to infinity also. Now, it's going to infinity slower. It's increasing quite slowly, but it is going to infinity. Because it is gradually going up. Now, this end behavior is a little bit different. Because my left end behavior, x doesn't even go to infinity. As I read this graph this way, from right to left, x only goes to 0. That's as far as it can go because of the asymptote. So I can read it, though, as x is going to 0. Where is y going? Good. Negative infinity. Okay, so now it says discuss any differences or similarities in the two functions. What do you notice about them? Or do you notice anything? They're uh -huh. uh, They're what? Inverses. They are inverses of each other. And you can tell because look at the domain. The domain of your top one is the range of your bottom one. The range is the domain. So they're, they're swapped. The asymptotes, this is an asymptote at y equals 0. This is an asymptote at x equals 0. And even your end behaviors are backwards. That's because they are inverses of each other. Okay, so if you flip to the next page, it says that at the top, you may have noticed that these two functions are inverses. Okay, so before this, we had done y equals b, b to the x, and the inverse of it is y equals log base b of x. Those are your, these things are inverses of each other. So these, these are inverses. Now, we, it's the same thing. These are still logarithms and exponentials. It's just that this is y equals e to the x. And natural log is actually log base e. But log base e is so common, and it's used in science, lots and lots, and you'll see when we get a little more into it, we'll do a lot of word problems, they're all basically science related. This e is called Euler's number, and Euler was a mathematician and scientist, he discovered it, it's kind of like pi, it's irrational, but it's found in all sorts of formulas and things, and because it was so common, and log base e became so used, frequently used, they gave it a <coughs> logarithm, which is where ln comes from. So they're still, these are still logarithms, they're still exponentials, just like we've been doing. They just happen to be a special set. But they are inverses of each other. So, it says, the fact that they are inverses creates an important algebraic implication. So, we're going to do something a little bit different than what we've done. We are going to graph what's called a composite function. So we're going to take these two inverses, and you can do this with any inverses, like x squared and square root of x are inverses. This will work for those two. But they're asking you to build a composite function. So they're saying f of x equals e to the x power, and g of x equals log x. So these are your two inverses. And then they give this crazy notation down here, f of g of x. What they want you to do is plug the g function inside of the f function. So they want you to take this, all that, L, the ln x, the natural log of x, and plug it right here where x is. So our function is going to look like this. y equals e, and instead of x, we're going to put it to the ln x. That's a composite function. We just took two functions and put them together inside of each other. So now we're going to plug that into our calculator and see what it looks like. Then 
Isn't that weird? It's just a line. And it's not just any line. What line is that? That's the linear parent function. So I'm going to draw it. And the linear parent function is y equals x. So in this case, the inverses equal x. However, it's not the whole linear parent function. It's specifically just, just the positives. So, and even if I go look at my table, set my table back to where it was on. If you go look at the table, you'll notice zero is not included. It doesn't touch zero. It starts right after zero. So it asks down at the bottom, according to the graph, what restrictions have, must be used in order to say that it's true? In this case, x has to be greater than zero. That's because, in this case, remember what I told you guys a couple of, probably last week when we first started logarithms? You cannot take a negative log. You can't have an argument of a logarithm that's negative. So because you can't have an argument of a log that's negative, and that's where the x is, I can't have any negative values up there. It won't work. Okay, so now we're going to do it the other way. This time, they want us to plug f inside of g. So they want you to do this. e to the x goes right here, where x is. So go ahead and plug that in and see what happens. So I plugged in ln e to the x, and I got that. So it's still the linear parent function, but this time there is no restriction. So it still equals x, but there's no restriction this time. And the reason there's no restriction this time is because um, e can be raised to any power. You can raise it to a negative power, it'll still work. It just makes it go down to the basement. So that still works. It's just logarithms that you can't take a negative value. All right, so now if you'll flip to the next page, there's two columns of exponentials. This, this is exponentials, and then on the following page are logarithms. You are going to just, don't worry as much about the graphs. I mean, you want to sketch them, but they do not have to be perfect. But you want to um, fill in your table for all of these. And then find the matching pairs. So on page three, something from column A will match with column B. And then you'll flip, and then, then back page is logarithms, and it's the same way. Something from column P will match with column Q. So go, and then we'll talk about some of the things that you found and why they, why they match.